Smile till it hurts. Right. And it's about up with people. Oh, I always put the the in there. Up with people. Up, up with, with the people. people. It's up with people. Were you one of those people? I was not an uppy. The reason I made the film was because it was about 15 years into my marriage and my husband revealed to me that he was a, an uppy. And he was in Up With People. He was actually a featured spokesperson. How many years had you been married before he confessed 15. that? 15. We're going on 32 years now, and it was a good 15 years into our marriage before he talked about his experience in Up With People. And I wanted to know why. Did you ask him why he felt compelled to let you know that? I actually wanted to know why he felt compelled not to talk about it. What was it about that up with people experience that he was running from, I wanted to know. What made an organization that was so warm and fuzzy and positive in which he could say, I could call anybody around the world and they would remember me instantly and welcome me instantly again into the group. And I wanted to know, well, why haven't you done that? What year was it that he joined? He joined in 1964 and he, he walked off the stage in Chicago in 1969 and never looked back. So my husband is a product of the 1960s, but I found it very curious that an African American would be traveling in the 1960s, meeting with kings, the Pope, heads of state, and speaking about the virtues of American society and American values at a time when the world was very much anti-American. Your husband's African-American. My husband is African-American. That must have been, especially in 1964, mm -hmm. that must have been a very interesting uh, experience for him. It was a very interesting experience. In fact, in the film, he talks about his experience as being one where he was conflicted because while he enjoyed being accepted, and remember Up With People is a multicultural, multiracial, international cast of singing kids that started right in the 60s to counter the hippie movement. So he was, in effect, a spokesperson that represented the melting pot of America at that time, and he was talking about all the virtues and very conservative, right-wing agenda, if you will, for the American government and corporations at that time. At what pinnacle moment when he was in that group in 1969, what was it that tipped the scale to have him leave in Chicago? Well, that's a great question. You should have interviewed him. <laughs> He's the one interview I did not conduct in the entire film. I did all the others, but he. Uh, he's but you not have the, the one. answer, though. I do have the answer. Thank God you have the answer. <laughs> it was when my husband realized that he actually felt like he was being an apologist for what was going on with the civil rights movement. And it was hard for him and he struggled with that. So when he left in 69, he said, I can't do this anymore. Did Up With People, during that, that period that your husband was in the group, did they incorporate political ideologies uh, while they were performing or at some point during the performance? Freedom isn't free. Freedom isn't free. Yes, absolutely. Which way, America? It, Up With People was all about being pro-Vietnam, pro anti-communist. Um, they had a very strong agenda when they started. And that's what most people don't know about them. They think of Up With People on four halftime shows, four Super Bowl halftime shows. They think of them as this very happy, smiling facade. But in fact, when they started, they were a, propaganda is a strong word, the mm -hmm. way we view it today. But they were propaganda or a soft power for an American agenda. And the on way the world that they that the way that they sold themselves, it was really a hard it made it for being a very hard argument to confront them. Because what's wrong with squeaky clean kids? What's wrong with kids that aren't on drugs? 
what, what's right. wrong with kids that are respecting their parents. But there was something more, I don't know, sinister might be a little harsh, but there was something else behind their motivation and what was that. There's quite, did you see my film? I haven't seen it yet. <laughs> well, you, you talk like you have. Well, you know, the reality is, is that um, there were two agendas and, you know, the, the right did not really have a voice to counter the hippies at the time. Young people, bright, enthusiastic, clean cut, it's a very subtle and a very appealing um, show. I mean, you want to participate. I want to participate. I would be the first one, had I known about it, probably to join up with people had they come through town. I'm the first one that'll get on the Small World ride at Disney. You know, I love that. It's a Small World ride. But the reality is, is that you have to get off and you got to exit at some point. And Up With People didn't do that and didn't allow a lot of people to do that. What type of criticisms have you received and from what factions within society? I've received a lot of criticism for this film and I've been perplexed as to why. I honestly, you know, as a documentarian, I just wanted to present both sides of the view and this is how the, these various participants talked about their experience in the 1960s, their experience and up with people over the next several decades. And I have gotten um, a lot of criticism from within the 20,000 alumni of Up With People itself. One, because there is discussion about how they came from a religious cult. Um, two, how in the early days there were arranged marriages and they controlled how um, people, whether you could even have children. Mm -hmm. You had to get permission to mm -hmm. do that. And that whole um, controlling aspect that was involved in Up With People, a lot of them going back don't want to admit that they could have been part of a cult. On the other hand, I get praises from a lot of uppies as well who say thank you finally because the truth is out and this is what we experienced and this is what really happened in the organization over those decades. I haven't received a lot of criticism from corporate sponsors and one thing in my film is while it might lay this agenda out, I don't criticize, I just state it. Here it is, here's what happened, here's how it is moving going forward. What do you say about the cultural divide? Because basically I think that your movie was a microcosm of what we have today, basically. Well, thank you for saying that because I believe it is too. The issues that caused a war of ideas, the, and the war of ideas in the 1960s has it's never been resolved. And we've seen it played out in media over the last four decades. It has not and it's still not resolved. So true. This film is really, it shows the other side of the story, if you will, on how the right approached Vietnam, communism, all the way up through Reagan, the Reagan era and then beyond. Went up with people, started with a mission, became mainstream, and then ended up, because they were no longer relevant, as a pop culture joke that's been parodied on Letterman and South Park and American mm -hmm. Idol and Glee. And, um, you can see that dynamic, you know, the, the rise and fall of corporations is something that you, is played out over and over again, but what makes this unique, mm -hmm. in my view, is that it, is still, it still goes to the heart of this ideological divide that is so prevalent in our country today. And it's today. getting wider and wider and wider and deeper and deeper and deeper. And it's getting wider and wider, but I hope what Smile Till It Hurts allows for mm -hmm. is I hope it allows for a conversation. Lee, it's been a pleasure. Anyway, I'm going to come over and, and, we get hugs? and... Oh, I'm going to get a hug right now. <laughs> <laughs> I don't get pulled by the spring